Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Okay. Ray, what song would you like to sing? Um, I'd like to sing Jesus Loves Me. Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good, when I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, though it makes him very sad. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. Hmm. Let's sing number 134. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels sing. Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King. Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting. Alleluia. Once he died our souls to save. Alleluia. Where's thy victory boasting grave? Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ hath opened paradise. Alleluia. Soar we then where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Alleluia. What's another one you like to sing, Ray? Um, I love to sing Bless the Lord, O my soul. Okay. Sing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his 
Yeah, you'll have to sing that some more other Sabbaths so I can learn it. Who has something they would like to praise the Lord for? Samantha. Um, I'm so grateful that the Lord, you know, He answers unprayed prayers many times. You know, we'll just have a worry or a concern and He'll answer that prayer without it even being requested mm. first. Mm. Amen. And it, when it's on our heart before it comes to our lips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who else has something they'd like to praise the Lord for? I'm thankful for uh, Debbie being in Cuba and uh, everything's going good so far. Good, good. Yes. <laughs> I would like to praise the Lord this week. We were working on the house of prayer and there was a top plate that hadn't been nailed down. And uh, yeah, it all happened so fast, I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but um, I fell 12 feet and landed on my feet, and I was fine. But if I would have fallen off the other way, I would have fallen 32 feet down <laughs> on the gravel or concrete. <laughs> so the Lord is so good. He's definitely had His hand of protection over us, for sure. If you fell 12 feet on your head, that would be really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can break a bone just falling down a couple steps. You know. I'm thankful for the protecting hand of the Lord, the angels that protect us even though we may not see them or feel them. Sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. Anybody else have something they'd like to praise the Lord for? Any prayer requests? Brother Michael. Um, I'm still on the search for a job that, you know, that I would really enjoy and that mm -hmm. I get a lot of fulfillment for, from. And mm -hmm. I just want to glorify God in whatever I do. And yes. Amen. I'm just thankful that His timing is better than my timing. So. Amen. I'm just, I just pray that, you know, he, he, he finds the right thing for me. I know he's got it out there mm -hmm. and I just have to pray for patience. Yes. I'm waiting for it. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. And yes, it's uh, being content with what we have, but being willing to walk through the doors that God may open in the future. Being ready for something more, something greater, or a bigger responsibility. Any other prayer requests? We should pray for the people that were affected by this hurricane. Yeah. And so, it, there, was, there was one in Cuba, Hurricane Oscar, uh, and they got evidently 24 inches of rain in a few hours, and they had. Flooding and landslides like they did in North Carolina. Wow. But they, the people there don't have much, so the resources are very limited. Mm. Mm. Any other prayer requests before we pray? Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for such a beautiful Sabbath day. We want to praise you for how you've protected us. Thank you for answering prayers even before we speak them. You know what's on our heart and we're so grateful for that. I want to thank you, Father, that you've given us sunshine today in such nice weather. Thank you for gathering believers here, for giving us peace to be able to worship you. We ask for those that were affected by this hurricane that you draw them closer to you to their families and that you'd speak to hearts during this time and, and use this hard time that many are going through at the, 
in this hard time they would turn to you with their whole hearts. Sometimes when we are rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, we don't feel our need of you. And there's times where you allow everything we have to be taken from us so that we will turn to you with our whole hearts. And Father, bless those of us that are here and those that will watch later. We ask for the people in Cuba that are really going through a hard time that were affected by the hurricane as well, that you will supply the needs there and strengthen the people that are there to help. We ask now as we open your word that you would speak to us, that you would guide us, you would teach us, Speak to each of us through your word, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. And we ask that you would send the Holy Spirit and bind Satan and his evil angels. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. In his name we pray, amen. Who knows what Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 says. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7. So in other words, whatever you plant, you will harvest. So if you plant the seeds of kindness, Eventually, it may take time, but you will reap a harvest of kindness. If you plant the seeds of dishonesty, eventually you will harvest deceit and fraud. If you plant according to God's principles, you will get a harvest that you will be satisfied with, that will supply your needs. But... If you plant the seeds of the flesh, you will of the flesh harvest corruption. As I was thinking about this, uh, this truth, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap, it made me think of a story that Dave Brummel has told me. It illustrates the fact uh, of some young boys and how they planted something and then they harvested something. Nobody liked what they planted or the, the actions that they performed and they definitely didn't like the results of their actions at all. Uh, but it, this story does illustrate the truth of this verse and I thought I would have Brother Dave come and tell us that story. Uh, it's quite an interesting story. Kind of Galatians 6 verse 7 is uh, is Basically, almost like uh, the saying that we have today, what, whatever goes around comes around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend in high school, and they liked to go and uh, steal pumpkins, and they'd get a whole pickup load at a time. They wouldn't steal one or two. So they stole some pumpkins from a vegetable farmer, local vegetable farmer, and uh, that's something you shouldn't do because they're going to get even with you. So what this farmer did was he had some real liquidy pig manure. And he loaded it up in his manure spreader. And he spread it about six inches thick around his pumpkin patch after his pumpkins got stolen. And he figured that they'd probably be back for another load someday. So a little while later, a few days or a week later... They came back for another batch. And he let them get in the pumpkin patch. And then once they were in the pumpkin patch, he was waiting for them. And he had a shotgun and he started shooting over their heads with the shotgun. And they had to crawl through about six inches of pig manure to get back out. And I believe that was the last time they stole pumpkins from that guy. <laughs> 
whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hmm. Why do we do things that we know we shouldn't do? Any ideas? The heart is desperately wicked. Mm. That's uh, Colonel Man. Yes. Yes, if you have your Bible, let's go to Jeremiah chapter... 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Have you heard that saying, follow your heart? Your heart is deceitful. It will deceive you. It's desperately wicked. If you follow your heart, it will only lead you down the wrong road. The Bible says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Don't follow your heart. Follow Jesus, Yeshua. He has said in John 14, verse 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can follow Jesus. You can walk on His path and He will not lead you wrong. But your own heart will lead you wrong. Read Jeremiah 17.10. The very next verse. Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. The Lord is searching the hearts. When he comes to your heart, will he find a desperately wicked heart? How did we come to have this desperately wicked heart? Where did we get this wicked heart? Well, if you want to go all the way back, uh, it, it went through our parents and our parents' parents and stuff, but it, it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. and the first time that man rejected obeying God. Mm. So we were born with a pure heart or a wicked heart? Wicked. A wicked heart, Samantha says. Yes, a wicked heart. So if we recognize that we have a wicked heart and we recognize that that wicked, deceitful heart will lead us in the wrong direction... Too. Well, uh, Satan was not born like we are. He was actually created as a beautiful angel. And he started out with a pure heart. Just like Adam and Eve. Yes. But his heart became wicked. Yes. So we were born with this wicked heart. We can't help it, can we? We were just born this way. But we don't have to stay this way. And if we recognize that we have a wicked heart, we recognize that this wicked heart is leading us down the wrong path to death, we recognize this, then what is the solution? What is the answer to our problem? We need a Savior. That's right. That's right. We need a Savior. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Let's turn in our Bibles to... Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. And let's start in verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. When we look at our sins and our iniquities, it's so bad that we don't even want to go there. We don't even want to think about some of the bad things we've done. And when we think about Jesus seeing that, we don't even want Him to see it. It's so bad. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. 
You can have all your sins blotted out, wiped away. Verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The world that we stand on today, why is it here? Jesus created it. He took a dark blob in space and made a beautiful planet. So the world we live in today was created by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Father, through His Son Jesus, Yeshua, created this world. So the very same One who created the earth that we stand on, that created the trees that we see, that created these mountains, that created the sun that's shining in our faces or on our backs, this, the very same One who created all this beauty, all this massive splendor that we see, can create a new heart in you and in me. He can give us a new mind and a new heart. Psalm 51, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Let's turn in our Bibles now to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Brother Dave, would you like to read this for us? Let this mind be in you which was also in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Is this scripture telling me and telling you that we can have the same mind that Christ had? Well, yeah, because we can have the Holy Spirit within us. Mm. And so that's how we can have the mind of Christ. Wow. So if I have a selfish mind, a sinful mind, an impure mind, I can allow the mind of Christ to be in me. And if the thoughts change, the words change. If the thoughts change, the actions change. Maybe we're focusing on our behavior and we think, I want to change my behavior. I want to modify my behavior. I'm not acting right. You're not acting right because you're not thinking right. You're not thinking right because you have a sinful, deceitful heart and mind that you were born with. You can be born again. Those who are born once will die twice. Those who are born twice will only die once. When you're born again, you have a new heart, a new mind, new desires, new thoughts, new ambitions, new purpose, new reason for living. Have you been born again? Have you received the Holy Spirit into your life? Maybe you've lost your joy 
lost your, your purpose for your existence. Maybe you've gotten so busy that you've forgotten your Creator. Come back to the One who can give you a new heart. Come back to the One who can do a divine brain surgery, who can take away the old impure mind and give you a new pure heart again. Let Him mold you. Let Him do this surgery. Let Him take the knife and cut the old out. Kind of like a cancer. Sometimes people have cancer and the doctor says, we have to operate. We have to cut this out. We have sin in our life like a cancer and we need the master physician with His skillful hands to remove, to cut out that sinful tumor, that cancerous tumor of sin out of our life, out of our brain, so then we can heal, we can be healthy. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to, ap to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Verse 20, For our conversation, or our life, is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not looking for a nuclear bomb to destroy this earth. We are not looking for a president to come and fix our nation. We do not, as believers, have a hope in a man here on earth. We look for the Savior. We look for Jesus Christ to come in the eastern sky to set up the only form of government that will actually last. The only form of government which will actually be liberty and justice for all. Verse 21, Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. Can you subdue your temper or your evil desires, your impure thoughts or desires? Can you subdue your tongue? No. We find that our temper can get the best of us. We find that as, as hard as we try, those, those impure thoughts find a place in our mind. But there is one. He is able to subdue all things unto Himself. Bring yourself to Jesus Christ. Tell Him, I have these desires. I have these thoughts. They're wrong. You subdue them. You conquer them. I'm coming to You to change me because I cannot change myself. And when you come to Him, he will change you. He will transform you. He will mold you. He will shape you. He will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Any other thoughts or questions before we close with prayer? Brother Dave. When Jesus was on this earth, He, he got the victory by being filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I think He had set His divinity aside or put it in dormancy. And Philippians 2.13 
for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Jesus got the victory when he was on earth, and he wants to share that victory with us today. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to do one too. Okay. Um, I want to praise the Lord to help my mama to love Jesus because she just loves Halloween, and I'm not interested to that. She needs to love Jesus. Yes. And she, she does not have to love Satan. Mm hmm you keep praying for your mom, and the Lord hears your prayers. Okay. Yes, that's good. That's good. Yes. The Lord loves your mom. Yes. yes the Lord loves everyone. That's right. <laughs> Any other thoughts before we close? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you with our brokenness, we can come with our sinfulness, we can come with our impure thoughts and desires. We can come to you with this mind that we've been born with that's twisted and warped. And we're thankful that we can come to you and you can mold us, you can shape us, you can transform us into the image of your Son. That we can be molded and shaped according to the pattern. That we can be made what we're supposed to be. Father, forgive us for where we've done wrong and thank you that you not only forgive us, but you give us power to change. Bless those of us that are here and those that will watch later. Thank you. Thank you that you have not given up on us and that you sent your only Son and that through Him we have this change, we have this new mind, this new heart, this new life and we have a new home in heaven prepared for us. Thank you and we... Look forward to meeting there with you soon. We ask for this in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.